Uh, the, these I've got three of these meters, and uh, I got two blue ones, which are the lower count, and a red one, which is the um, the higher count one. And they've all had a lot of use, and uh, they've all failed uh, slightly at different times, but in the same way. The um, they start to give inconsistent readings because the rotary switch uh, begins to lose contact with the uh, the gold contact that you can see uh, uh, that I'm showing you. Um, uh, so I've actually got this apart now and I'm starting the video here. Sorry about that, I'm not doing the dismantle. Um, but there's only four screws or so. Um, and uh, uh, what I'm suggesting you do here is uh, mark the top of the, uh, the round disc uh, so that you're going to be able to get it back in exactly the same place. Um, and also mark uh, the uh, four, uh, sorry, one, two, three on one side, four on the other. So that's seven uh, contacts. Um, mark where they are just in case one of them drops out uh, you, you're going to be able to put it back in again um, so the game is to um, increase the pressure on the um, on the disc uh, because uh, the whole thing uh, relies on the tolerances um, in the factory putting it together to to give the correct pressure for the uh, contact points and uh, as I've had got three of these and they've all failed in the same way uh, I can't imagine that other people haven't had a similar problem so this is how I fixed it so I've got some capped on tape and I've just chosen that because it's fairly slippery tape and also fairly tough and um, uh, I did try this with one layer. Uh, the first one that went was the 10,000 count meter, which was the red one. And um, I, I put one layer of tape on, um, as you can see I'm doing now. Um, but um, it obviously wasn't quite enough because after a year or so's further use, uh, the same thing started happening again. So what, I've, what I'm doing is putting two layers of tape on. Um, you know, capped on tapes, a bit like sellotape, it's about 0.05 of a millimetre thick. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty thin stuff. So you could put three, four, five layers on probably. Um, but um, uh, with this I'm putting um, a layer on either side you've just got to make sure you don't um, cover up the the indexing holes um, and then um, an extra layer on top of that so I've got two layer thicknesses and here I'm thinking about putting it back together again so I'm just um, putting a little bit of um, uh, grease on the um, on the contact points to help it to last a bit longer uh, when you put it back together again, make sure you clean your, you've got your glasses clean. Uh, obviously you don't want fingerprints on the inside. Uh, and then you hook it in at the top there, as you can see I'm doing. Uh, and then you've got to make sure that those rubbers don't get caught uh, for the two buttons, the red and the blue button. Um, then um, uh, shoe in the um, contacts for the leads. And um, and then the last thing to do is the two side contacts. And uh, so everything's neat and tidy. And make sure your fuses are okay. Uh, I've had to bodge these fuses. Um, but um, uh, so I've got glass fuses in which don't really fit properly. But it's so it's all a bit of a bodge up. You can get... Uh, um, surface mount fuses but you'd have to um, uh, you'd have to change the mountings for them and all the rest of it so I've just done a bodge 
so I've now put in the three black uh, screws which um, hold it in so it's all neat and tidy then um, you've got uh, three o-rings which actually uh, press there on the bottoms of the um, of the plug sockets uh, and that keeps them in place uh, so I'm just screwing in two of the um, uh, two, two of the case screws um, till I till I test it. So now we're ready to give it a test. Um, plug in the leads. Turn it on to the uh, ohms meter reading, and um, short the probes. And yeah, about what point uh, one of a um, an ohm is probably about right for the for the test leads. Wang it backwards and forwards a few times. Make sure the buttons are working. And in fact, I've trapped that bloody blue button. And I've done it before, uh, putting putting them together. And even though I was quite careful putting it together, uh, I've still managed to trap it. So I'm going to have to um, uh, take the case off and untrap it. Um, here I'm just trying to trying to do it with a blade to lever it free, but it's not going to come. So I'm going to have to take it a bit skin. Uh, but meantime, I'll just make sure that the... Um, uh, I just uh, find a test voltage. So I can't remember. Oh, yes, I got a 10 volt um, test voltage here. So there you go. 9.99, that's fine. 9.99. Um, Wang it backwards and forwards a few times. Make sure it's giving consistent readings, which it is. So that's fine. So the, the main fix is done, but I'm going to have to bodge around and, um, and just let that that blue trapped button go um, and then uh, and then job jobbed. So there we go. That's that repair done. Um, now we just move on to another uh, thing that I've had to do on all these three meters, <clears throat> which is the they've got very soft plastic uh, windows, and they scratch up terribly easily. So um, this is just a quick fix for uh, for that because they become very difficult to use, and uh, you know the contrast um, of the of the figures goes and um, you've got scratches all over the screen and so um, uh, what I used was some diamond tape which is a, a, that very clear sellotape with um, uh, it's actually waterproof but it's very clear and it costs about twice the price of ordinary sellotape and I'm not sure that you can get it anymore. So you, you've got to find some ultra clear tape to go on. Uh, if you just use ordinary sellotape, it can be a real bugger if you want to take it off and change it again. And also it, um, it, uh, it is, yeah, it can be difficult to get off. Um, the ultra clear stuff you can change quite easily. So that works quite well. So that's that one. And there we go. Cheerio, folks.